A lot of chatter about this being my Super Bowl. Uh, I know Aram is very excited. Peter is the one on the hot seat today. It is Peter Apple's top 100 players in Major League Baseball for Wednesday, March 27th. Opening day is tomorrow, folks, and we got to talk about the top 100 that Peter swears is perfect. Wow. And if you're new to this version of our programming, Peter believes that he has truly concocted the best assortment of 100 baseball players that we have on planet Earth that are playing in Major League Baseball, like I assume Sasaki would be in, and I assume, you know, like a Skeens or, or a Jackson Holiday would be in, but that's not what we're going to go with. And this really just turns into the roast of Peter Apple. So before we do this, I just want to say, Peter, I love you. I hope you know that, like, we're signing up for a debate right now. Because last year you said, like, hey, you know, I really want you to grill me. And then it got a little hot, I think. But I need you to know that it might get hot again. And I love you both. I want to say that first. But on the second side, it may be a debate show for you, but there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. And I have all the right answers. So it's yeah. nice that you think this is a grilling. And uh, that'll be for the listeners of the Just Baseball show to decide to say, did you truly grill me or did you guys just back yourselves into a hole and you didn't have a big enough shovel to dig yourselves out of? That's what might happen here. I'll, I'll give Peter credit on last year. One of the things I dug my heels into the hardest was Austin Riley over Corey Seager. That was a Peter W. Um, I'm going I'm gonna put I'm gonna point out some W's. So as just like a tip of the cap, it's like you know before you know in a UFC fight you know, you, you can touch gloves or not. Like I'm gonna touch gloves with you here yeah. always. Um, we're gonna touch gloves here. Major W for Peter there, which is crazy because Austin Riley was great. Corey Seager was arguably the best player in the sport. So touching gloves, Peter W. there. Before you get into any L's, before you get into any L's, I want to make it clear. It's not my fault if a player did not perform to what I thought he would be. That's the it's player's fault. fault. Now, if I correctly predict a player, I just gave you the right answer. So my I losses. We lost. Exactly. Yeah. My losses are not my fault. And the wins props to me for that. You're yeah. Amazing. So. The You're captain amazing. makes it to harbor on a successful voyage, but the captain gets off the ship and goes to the rescue boat. I have that. We got to go rewrite some history books, it seems. Yeah, that's why it's flawless, right? There's no way I can make a mistake. It's a mistake on the player, not me. I appreciate arm touching gloves. I will also do like the the post fight thing where like post fight interview winning winning fighter says, yeah, you know, he's a really talented fighter, all, nothing but respect. So I'll do that after the fact. I appreciate arm touching gloves. Peter, give us the uh, give us the MGM rundown before we get into this. Yeah, the top 100 and everything we do here on the Just Baseball Show is brought to you by the king of sportsbooks, and that is BetMGM. Remember, when you download on iOS or Android, make sure to use code Just Baseball. Why? You'll get a free bet offer up to fifty. $1,500. You do not want to leave free money on the table while they're giving it out. Make sure to load up your account for this amazing MLB season. Hopefully, you might have sprinkled on some of the bets that we already gave out. But of course, I'll have plenty of bets for you the entire MLB season. So get started on BetMGM using Code Just Baseball. Remember, must be 21 or older. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Time for the debate show or quote unquote debate show because I'm right. So the top 100 is linked in the episode description. It is live at just baseball.com. Peter's top 100 players. Mm -hmm. um, Cal Quantrill's 100. It's an annual thing. The new. You don't, you don't think he should be 100? The new two starter for the Colorado Rockies. I'm not going to say I don't think Cal Quantrill shouldn't be 100. I'm just going to give you a list of 15 guys that didn't make your list. Okay. 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 Um, hey, this. hey, Peter. Fresh off a four and a half win rookie year, why did James Outman not make your top one hundred? Oh shit, James Outman. We talked about him when we were ranking the top ten center fielders. Um, I think you made a really good point. Where what's truly his floor, right? Because he's going to play great defense. He's going to hit for some power. He's going to steal some bags. He's probably going to be in the three and a half to four win category. I just think that with such an elevated strikeout rate, I think what it does is it leads to slumps. So I'm just not sure yet in year two if his slumps are longer than they were in his first year or if they are shorter. 
And that's a player I could be wrong on. It's just such a tough profile to read for me. And with only one year, I decided to leave leave him off. And just before we start again, there are no players on this top 100 that haven't played a game in Major League Baseball. I think Wyatt Langford is going to be a top 100 player by the end of the season. If Jackson yeah. Holiday gets called up, he's probably going to be a top 100 player. But just for right now, since they have zero MLB service time, they're just not going to be on the list. It's not a detriment to them. It's just the yeah. way I qualify the list. You got to have at least played one game in Major League Baseball. So what do you think James Outman, just tying a bow on Outman, you said you think his floor is like, what, three, three, three and a half? I mean, it could be lower than that, right? If the slumps prolong a little bit longer, I just think with so much swing and miss, I saw him in the postseason two really get beat up by high velocity and, you know, the breaking balls. And I just don't know. He's a hard player to project for 24. And there's also plenty of Dodgers already on the list. If, if you go on, like, would you have, rather have Bobby Miller or would you rather have James Outman? Bobby Miller is 99. I would rather have Bobby Miller. James Outman isn't on my list. James Outman's a threat for 30 homers in a four and a half win season. Playing he's, also great defense. he's also a threat will, to lead the league in strikeouts. I, I will also say um, if the floor is three war, we're 73 hitters in baseball that had a three win year or better. So he could be the, on the, the one other. The one other note is I, I definitely would take him over Ian Happ, who I so Outman's mm-hmm. rookie season was better than any year that Ian Happ has had in his career. Uh, three six war was Ian Happ's best with, and I think his career high in homers was twenty five. That was a year where he actually had a one point three war. Um, Happ is good, but if 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 Outman's floor is kind of three wins and he can play center, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Outman over over Ian Happ. That's fair. I'm not sold on Outman's floor being three. Um, I think that's I think that's a fine projection. I'm not really sold on that, and I know for a fact that Ian Happ has done it year in and year out. Maybe it's not to the ceiling that Outman put up last year, but again, something I got burned on, um, Arm, when you were talking about some of my L's, I put some rookies on the top 100 last year that I thought had a low floor, high ceiling kind of thing. Like they're just, they're tough players to gauge and I got burned on some of them. So for this year, if I was just kind of unsure about a guy after one season, I docked him a little bit and James Outman was just on the outside looking in. Yeah. So I wonder if this guy fits the criteria. Hey, Peter, mm-hmm. why did 25 year old Isak Paredes not make the top 100 players? 31 oh, homers. Out the favorites. Hold on. 31 homers, 98 driven in, a 137 WRC plus, and a 4.3 F4 in his age 24 season. What makes that guy not a top 100 player? So I do have concerns about the quality of contact, right? He put up a 362 Woba last year with a 315 X Woba. That was one of the largest discrepancies of any player in Major League Baseball. Isak Predis is also not known for being a defender. He's about a league average defender, maybe slightly worse, but around that league average mark. So I'm like, all right, if it's all about the bat and he plays at a position that is all about the bat in third base, how do I rank that, especially after he did it one time, right? In 22, he was pretty good, right? Put up a 116 WRC+, plus, put up 20 home runs. And he was able to get a lot of those home runs in Tampa with that short left field. He really tapped into those pull side fly balls and got the most out of his bat. I think this might be the best season he ever turns in. It was still a great season, but I expect him to regress in 24. Still think he's a great player, just didn't quite make the top 100 players. Got you. All right. Keep going. I I will say one thing, though. If you look at, I think guys there, it's all about the bat. Kind of means that they're not giving you any defensive value at all. He provided and if you're a league a good average bit. defender. You're actually giving defensive value there. And if yeah. you look at like DRS, he technically actually edged out Nolan Arenado last year, <laughs> checked in at seventh among qualified third basemen. Uh, so he might not give you like a ton of of value, but he's definitely not a, a guy that it's it's all about the bat, and that's the only way that you're going to accumulate WAR. I guess yeah. would be my my case for for Paradis. I do hear the quality of contact thing, but I also think he's going to be a guy that outslugs his EVs because he just backspins baseballs because he leverages his hitters counts and does not miss 
pitches that he can elevate to his pull side. But that said, if they start working away from him a lot more this year, I'm, I'm interested to see how he adjusts. But I, I'd like to think that that was already something that was you know, kind of understood by pitchers last year, and he still seemed to be able to get his. Yeah. I'm going to run you fair. through rapid. What I will also yeah. say is uh, when you see the top 100, like the 90 or 100 to 90, don't talk about Cal. Cal's getting 100. But besides gotcha. that, who are you taking off to put Isak Paredes in? And then are you putting Isak Paredes over James Outman? Uh, Ian I, Hap. You, just anti Ian Hap guys. I'm an Ian Hap guy. I think he's the definition of solid. I think he does everything. Yeah, I mean, well I'm taking I'm taking Isak Paredes over Josh Naylor. Mm-hmm. I think Naylor has a better bat than him. I'm taking but, Isak Paredes over Jeremy Pena, probably. Like his see, offensive that, concerns. That one I wanted to make. Uh, that one I wanted to kind of make a statement there. I still think Jeremy Pena is a really good player. And I know that he had this sophomore season, especially with the bat, that was just underwhelming. But I think we just kind of forget about 2022. And I think that's illustrated in my top 100 is a lot of rankings in general are really, really based off of 2023. And what I was doing is I was combining a lot of war totals from 22 and 23, just a little bit of a larger Mm -hmm. sample size. So guys like Ian Happ got a little bit of a bump. And then when I look at their last five years, they just do it over and over again. And then on the side of Jeremy Pena, Jeremy Pena was easily in our top 10 shortstop, then goes on and wins MVPs in the playoffs and just had a struggling second season offensively, which happens to young guys like this. So my reasoning for ranking him that high is I do think that shortstop is a premium position, right? This is also position bank. Based. So it's like if it's a shortstop versus a third baseman, if I think they're about tied, I might give the slight edge to that shortstop. So that is more a belief that Jeremy Pena bounces back in 24 offensively. So yeah. based, based on that logic, what does Josh Naylor do better than Isak Paredes? I do think, um, I think Josh Naylor has a little bit more power than Isak Paredes. And I think Isak Paredes got the most out of his power last season. Josh Naylor had 17 home runs. Redis had 31. I will also say credit to you sticking sticking to your guns because I just went back to the third base article where we ranked the third baseman, and you had Matt Chapman and Josh Young ahead of Paredes. I disagree with that, but you had it, so like you stuck with it, and I can, again, it, tapping the gloves, I can really appreciate you but, sticking with those guys in the top 100 when I, Paredes is outside, even though I vehemently disagree. That's fair. I, think, I, I just I, am more. I think I'm more worried than you guys about the bat with Isak Perez. I here's the thing. If if the bat regresses, you just talked about it being like all about the bat at third base. He's an average to slightly above average third baseman. Josh Naylor is a below average defensive first base. First base, and hit for less power from a slugging perspective. If if Peretti's regresses to by 11 home runs, that would still be more than what you got from Naylor. And you'd have better defense at a more important defensive position. So unless I guess he hits 300 again, Josh Naylor, I, I don't know what he does better than Paredes, I guess. Yeah. What I will say is jo- Josh Naylor put up a much higher X Woba than Isak Paredes. Josh Naylor also had a near close WRC plus. And when you look at EVs, Josh Naylor is putting up the same type of stuff. It just, Isak Paredes got the most out of his fly balls last year, right? And, you know, home run to fly ball rate, it, it looked a little bit unsustainable for me. So if I think Isak Paredes is more in the 20 to 25 range, and I also think, and remember, if we're just going on, you know, war totals or if we're just ranking by the bat, I personally do think that Naylor is a better defender than what the number said, right? This is my opinion. So I know that Peter the Vision. numbers haven't been great, for First Naylor, appearance of Peter Vision. Exactly. But what I will <laughs> say is I think Naylor is such a good athlete that I'm surprised that the numbers don't represent how good I think he is at first base. So when I think that Isak Paredes is about an average defender, I think that Naylor is an average defender as well. And I would prefer the guy with 308 last year with more room to grow in the power department than Isak Paredes, who I think is going to regress offensively. More room to grow? How so? He's- I think there's more power in there. I think if you just lift I mean, the ball a little more, there'll more. be more power. But also, I mean, I think the defensive thing, that's that's a spin. I mean, that's a total spin zone. He's graded out as a, as a negative defender every single year. Uh, he's been in the big leagues at first base pretty much for the most part. And 
I, I don't mean, like he's fine there. I just I, I don't know. I, I think Paredes when you're playing third base is way more important in terms of of being an average defender at third base is a lot more valuable than an average defender at first base. I don't know. I I get it. I guess if you think that he's going to elevate more and walk more, then sure. But I'm I, I guess just that I don't really understand what Naylor does better other than expected stats, which I well, you know aren't we talking about twenty two and twenty three and a little bit of projection? I think you're projecting a leap with Naylor and a very massive regression from Isak Paredes for for that to be, you know, I think defensible. Which he, I am. here's the. Th- yeah, here's the thing though. Peter has already tapped into my trump, like the ultimate trump card on me. Like he knows the lowercase x is my kryptonite, so he will shut me down if he uses the lowercase x in any argument. So I tapped out a little bit ago. Sure, Arm, sure, I appreciate you fighting this battle for me. That's fine. I mean, Josh Naylor at three oh eight last year. I mean, I think that should be a part of the. I think that should be a part of the discussion. He was one of the best bat to ball guys last year. Wow. Um, I think Look there's lowercase x there. using batting average. Yeah, He's I mean, if we we crazy. could go to we could go to every stat. Um, <laughs> but I agree, it's a, it's a good debate. Um, I'll be curious. Uh, who has the better season next year? I think it's going to be Josh Naylor. Okay, I am willing to bet on that. Yeah, okay. I, I would. What, love yeah, to what should what should we should we make it an F four thing? Should we make it a WRC plus thing? F four to make it a war thing. I'd love please to make, make it a war thing. thing. Sure, for you guys, we'll make it a war thing. There's a reason we're not doing a WRC plus thing. Let's make it a war. Thing. I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it. But again, we we're, we're ranking players. We'll do both. Let's matters. do both. Let's do both. Okay, let's do both. We'll see what happens. This is a good All one. Right. Um, Lock me in on that one. Twelve guys that I'll run through rapid fire, and I'm saving the best for last. We're not even RM, into the top 100 yet. No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay. We are get RM. You are going to have a conniption fit at the last guy. Um. um Andres Jimenez did not make the top 100. Andres Jimenez had the worst possible year, and he was still like a three-win player. Um, I get it. He had a bad year. Seiya Suzuki did not make the top 100, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. Willie Adamas did not make the top 100. I get bad year. Key Brian Hayes, off of his first gold glove, did not make it. Ellie De La Cruz and O'Neill Cruz didn't make it. Matt McLean didn't make it. Jesus Lazardo or Yuri Perez did not make the list. Logan Gilbert didn't make the list. Freddie Peralta did not make the list. Nathan Ivaldi did not make the list. And my favorite omission, Zach Eflin of the Tampa Bay that Rays was, did yeah, not was. make the top 100. Correct. Wait, yeah, where, where is Zach Eflin? Yeah, so there were a couple of pitchers. And, and real quick, you cannot point to the expected numbers here. All right, I will. I will do an argument that you can understand, Jack. Perfect. Um, I was looking at the last couple of spots on the top 100. And is, yeah. if you're reading along, you probably see Bobby Miller. You see Aaron Nola. You see Joe Musgrove. Guys like that. I stuck to my starting pitcher's rankings, um, as, as you probably know. So I ranked Eflin. I'm not sure. I think I ranked him in the 15 or wherever I ranked him. It was past some of these guys. But one omission and a couple of guys that I put in there was guys like Grayson Rodriguez and Bobby Miller. And maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid with these guys. But Arm, we were talking about on the player award episode when you gave him that Sandy comp. I actually made a change late last night. I really, really started just like deep, deep dive into him. I think he's just going to have an incredible season. Um, I think he can put up what Sandy did in that unanimous Cy Young season but instead of the over 220 innings, I think it's going to be about 160. With Eflin, I absolutely love, if we're looking at peripherals, it points to a ton of success, but at the end of the day, he did it once. And I know that there is the, you know, Bobby Miller and Grayson Rodriguez have only done it once, but I just think their talent supersedes guys like Zach Eflin. But the one guy who I was pissed that I left off is Freddie, Freddie Peralta. That one, that one hurts me because I felt I knew I was going to find a spot for him. And then I just thought to myself, I was like, Bobby or Freddie. And I was like, I just, I think Bobby might have a little bit more upside. Um, So I had to, because I was like, I could live with myself if I left a Freddie or a Zach Eflin off and they had a great year. I couldn't live with myself if I missed on Bobby or Grayson because I think they can just be 
aces in this league. So what I will say is put yourself in the position of AJ Preller's best friend. You're sitting down in AJ Preller's home and you're getting drunk off your ass. And a couple right. drinks in, you say, hey, AJ, if you could swap out Joe Musgrove for Zach Eflin right now, how much better would you feel about your rotation? What is his answer, Arm? So I was the, the thing with the pitching is interesting. So I actually think the pitchers, when you look at it, like I, I can be talked into each of those guys being in there instead of Eflin. I I think there's a world where you could make the argument and say, I, I believe in Musgrove's upside to, to get back to where he was, where, I mean, you look at 2022, it was, it was nasty. I think ultimately just because of the, the injuries and, and, and some of the just frustration last year, you'd probably feel better about Eflin, but I could understand going with the Musgrove track record where, where, where I even lean further into it is, and I know you, you got to have position players and pitchers. Like you don't want it to be too heavy one way or another. And I'll just, just go back to Josh Naylor. I'll take I'll take any of those arms <laughs> over Josh Naylor. I'm, he's a first baseman <laughs> that's slightly above average offensively. Like we're, we're also moving the goalpost a little bit. Like the average WRC plus for first base is going to be a higher than a hundred. He's he's really not that good. Um, I, that that's my one. I would take any of those pitchers over the slightly above average hitting first baseman. I think Naylor's going to go crazy this year. That's what I think. I think Naylor's going to hit 20 to 25 home runs. I think he's going to hit 290 to 300. I think he's going to put up a 135 WRC plus, And I think the defense is going to improve. And I think he's going to have a great year. But I understand that, right? First glance, like some guys I'm taking a leap on. I'm taking a leap on Josh Naylor. And it'll be that's why I said it'll be extremely interesting to see at the end of the year. But again, with the pitchers, I wrote this in the article at the beginning. If there was ever a debate between a hitter and a pitcher, I'm going with the hitters. Kind of like what you were saying, Arm, with your top 100. I took a page out of your notebook. The pitchers are just ranked a little bit lower than the offensive pieces. If I think it's close, I'm giving it to the hitter. Even if I think the pitcher has a slight edge, I'm probably still going to give it to the hitter. My least favorite thing about this podcast, about baseball, is when we have to go over the injury report. And we have to talk about how another pitcher just went down with an elbow or a shoulder or an oblique or a hip or an ankle or literally whatever. It's just gotten to the point where it's like, I feel better about Naylor putting up a higher war than some of these pitchers, even though the pitchers are more talented at their position. Sure, fair enough. I, that's just where I come from. And I'm, we're focusing on Naylor, and I love it because he's a guy who I'm staking my claim on. I think he's going to have a great year for Cleveland. All right. Aram, do All you right. see anything in the top uh, 80? Like, really, where I, where, where my gears start to get grinded a little bit is at 69 exactly. Um, so, like, in, in 70 <laughs> to 100, what say you? <laughs> um, Matt Chapman. Uh, I, I'm just not a big Matt Chapman guy, to be so, honest. Anymore. Can can I actually expand this conversation real quick? Matt Chapman and Josh Young. I saw Royce Lewis behind both of them. I was like, hmm, why? Yeah, that's kind of my question because you mentioned kind of operating on on the side of of like optimism when it comes to injuries. Royce Lewis, when healthy, is is one of the you know, more electrifying players. I mean, we've seen what he can what he can do. And Chapman, yeah, he's you know. Put together, I think if you look at it, like eight war combined over the last two years or something close to that, but it's been a downward trajectory. The second half was was putrid. Um, it, uh, again, going into this year, like do you, do you feel like genuinely Matt Chapman has a better year than than Royce Lewis or Josh Young? I think Royce Lewis is more talented than both of them, Josh Young and Matt Chapman. But Matt Chapman, even when he had a putrid second half, still had a decent year. And he's still, I could just fall back on the fact that he is just an all-world defender. So the war total, there's a pretty good floor for that as well. Royce Lewis is a fine defender. He's around league average, maybe even slightly below. But the thing is, it's hard to really grade him on it because he has 70 major league games under his belt. He's a guy with an ACL injury, rehab that well, but then has just been banged up and has not played a full season. But whenever he touches the diamond, I want to put him in the top 50. And I am optimistic about his health. That's why I put him in the top 100. But at the same time, he just I don't have a ton of data with him. And now you could say the same thing about Evan Carter. But I'm just, I feel better about Evan Carter. And this Hold is on. another one. Say, why, why, Keep why Carter out of this right now because I'm going to get to Carter. Go yeah. Well, so why so high on Carter based off of a small sample and then Royce Lewis in 58 games 
putting up a one a one fifty five WRC plus off of an ACL slashing 309, 372, 548. When also when he moves to third now, he's slightly above average defender. Like if we're buying the Ev- what Evan Carter did, why are we not buying a larger sample of what Royce Lewis did? I'm definitely buying Royce Lewis. I mean, he's in the top 100. But what I will say about Evan Carter, it's less about Royce Lewis and more about Evan Carter. You said that he put up a one. Can I? Yeah. You said that he put up a 155 WRC plus right in the regular season in those 58 games. Raked, right? Evan Carter was at 180. How many games? Like 32. He's get, so Royce Lewis has a career 915 OPS in 3.73 the number of plate appearances. He has nearly four times the number of plate appearances in the big leagues that Evan Carter does. Yeah. And 23 games, and the same thing that you docked Outman for, right, the, the high K rate, in those 23 games for Evan Carter, he struck out 32% of the time. Royce Lewis struck out less, produced more, I think, like in terms of you just look at the the, the volume, I, I think like it's double more than double the games. So a larger sample size, less strikeouts, which we docked Outman for, and you know I I, I guess I'm trying just trying to understand why we push Carter based on that rationale, and then Lewis doesn't quite get the same push. The reason I ranked Evan Carter a little bit higher is I think he's going to be a better defender in the outfield than Royce Lewis or then Royce Lewis would be at third base. I think he's going to be a better defender there over a full season. He's also younger. Which which I think is totally fair. Yeah. Okay. So, and what I saw from Evan Carter, your right arm, there was that high strikeout rate right in the, in the regular season. He struck out 32% of the time. He also walked 16% of the time, which is unbelievably elite. That's not something James Outman can say. That's not something Royce Lewis can say. And then in the postseason against the best pitchers, in Major League Baseball, he actually lowered the K rate down to 26%, still walked 14% of the time, and put up a 155 WRC+. plus. I think he's a special bat. While there was some swing and miss in the very, very early parts, he was not a high strikeout guy in the minor leagues at all. And now there was Royce Lewis, right? This isn't really like fully about the strikeouts. I just think with James Outman, there's much more swing and miss and when I watch them against big time power hitter power pitchers, it looks like Alman can get blown away a little bit, while Evan Carter and Royce Lewis just have a different approach there at the plate. I think Evan Carter's approach is better than Royce Lewis's. Royce Lewis has more power, but I think as an all around baseball player, Evan Carter is going to be a better player in 2024 than Royce Lewis is because I'm also still concerned, right? We've had a couple of seasons, right? In 22, he only played like 12 games and 23 only played. So it's like Evan Carter has played all the games that he's supposed to play as well. And I personally think at the end of the year, Evan Carter puts up a higher WRC plus than Royce Lewis does. And I'm sure you guys don't want to make a war bet because of the injury concerns, but we can do it. Well, well, again, but the, the big thing was injury optimism. Devin Williams is on this list. Um, Guys like that, like if they've just done it a a crazy long time and they've been healthy for a long time and they're injured right now, I didn't dock them. I didn't think, okay, because Garrett Cole has an elbow problem. Let me drop him to 34. That wasn't really the point of the exercise, in my opinion. And then the other question with Carter is if he's not facing lefties at all, does that dock him at all? Because I mean, he he's... You know, I think in a ten at bats against lefties in the big leagues was zero for ten with six Ks, and then in the playoffs they did not put him against lefties at all. Uh, it was like they, that was the avoidance. So he was put in those positions only against righties. Played really, really well. I love Evan Carter. Kind of say the same about Altman though. Altman didn't really play against lefties much either. Yeah, well, I'm talking more about Royce Lewis yeah. right now. Um, Royce, and- yeah, I think that's totally fair. I think that's something that let's see what happens. Right, if he if they just don't play him against lefties, it's clear that I that I overrated him. Right, if if that's kind of the Rangers' plan, and it's like, all right, Evan Carter is purely against righties, I'll hang my hat on that one. I think he's too good of a hitter to go over ten with six Ks. Um, I think that w- those were ten plate appearances. If that's what happens in twenty four, I'll be wrong. I mean, it'll be more on Evan Carter because it was his fault for not facing lefties. If you think about it. But I yeah. think he's going to be able to hit lefties fine, and he's going to rake off righties, just destroy them. I think he's going to be awesome. So he's, you hate Evan quick. Carter arm? He's number five on your prospect list. I, I love <laughs> Evan Carter, but I, I, I take it. Just Royce sounds Lewis like you over. hate him. You know what? It's clear Arab hates. Put that on the quote cards. Six, 
<laughs> six ten. He, by the way, uh, he Evan Carter in the minor leagues last year slugged to two fifty three against lefties. Um, two forty two, three fifty seven, two fifty three against lefties. I'll so, ask you as, as the prospect guy: Are you afraid of that against lefties? Yes, that's and you why ranked he's him really high. Higher, yeah, that's why he's not higher. Um, I, I think you could make a case for him as three uh, based on the things that he's shown. He's been one of my favorite guys for a long time as a prospect, but. Yeah, the, the risk of him, you know, not being able to hit lefties, it's marginal at the end of the day because, you know, you could still play a ton. But yeah. that is a little bit of a concern at this point. I, I, it's more of a concern for 2024. I think it can get better over the course of several years, but it's not something that I think is going to get better this coming season. And I think with the depth that the Rangers have, they're going to shelter him, especially with Langford up there now and, and the other options that they have. We'll see. Will That's where I can go wrong, but I don't think so. I think he's going to crush lefties. I will also say I just went hunting because you said he walked in an elite clip, Evan Carter. 23 games, he walked 12 times in the regular season. Uh, James Altman in July, 22 games, 14 walks. So comparable. I think those two could walk a similar a month? clip. Did you just pull a month? I just pulled I mean, a month your because whole sample of Evan Carter. that's the entire sample of Evan Carter. On um, well, the playoffs, before- in the playoffs, 13 and a half percent as well. There we go. I think that's more likely, and when you consider the minor league numbers as well, right? I mean, this guy walked at above a 10% clip every single stop, and James Outman did have 14 walks in July. James Outman had a 12% walk rate on the year. Not 16. Uh, before we get into this clumping, I want to do a wellness check. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. This is a blast. You're great. Okay. This is this is the most fun. This is like the only like real debate show we have over the entire season. You this, love this. I, I love this. Yeah. Come at me. I'm, I'm having a great time. Okay. 67, Evan Carter. 68, Randy Arozarena. Yes. 69, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. What's it going to take for you to stop hating Vladdy? You know, there's an art to a top 100. There are a couple. Hold on, hold on. There's an art to hating someone that lost you a parlay. There is. There's a. There's an art to a top 100. Cal Quantrill's at 100. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is at 69. There are a couple of clusters where I put right when we get into the 40 range, you might see two guys who both were in an MVP race right next to each other. There's an art to this. Could I put Vladdy at 62? Could I put Vladdy at 58? Sure. But he's my 69th ranked player. More of a tip of the cap to you, Vladdy. Let's see you do it this year because he didn't do it for me last year. And objectively, the last two years, he has been what? Fine. He's obviously great. He's obviously hits the living piss out of baseballs, but it's on the ground a lot. Now, if he lifts the ball, he could win the triple crowd. He, he hit 48 home runs as a 21 year old. One of And he three- hit like 320 that year. What did and- he hit? And he, what, he finished second in MVP voting? I And arguably, he could have won it. I don't think he should have, but arguably, he and he didn't, but whatever. And then the last two years have been subpar. He could just go out and destroy baseballs, and I'll tip my cap to him. But I do have steps? problems about the way he enters in at bat. It's just, it makes me want to claw my eyes out watching him because I know the talent is immense. I know the talent-wise, top 10 hitter, 20 hitter, but he hasn't fucking done anything in two years. <laughs> but the so, X step. Yeah. And I, he should be 69. He should. <laughs> He's literally the 69th best player. Hold on. Or the X stats. X stats. If we're going, if we're talking X, expected batting average. What are you, some nerd, Arm? What, what are you, what do we go with X stats? Hey, Jack doesn't hey, understand want- it. I this don't is, want you to consistently guys, apply this, these things. This is too much. I don't, I don't think we should talk about the X stats right now. X slug 503 compared to 444. Woba 340. X Woba 378. Yeah, he's so, he's unlucky. He's unlucky every year. Just like Jose no, Altuve do out does. He was unlucky in 22 as well. And well, no, 22 actually the expected stats were exactly Woba 351. X Woba 3 351. 2021 Woba 419. X Woba 421. Yeah, he, so, was, re- he was really unlucky. No, so 21, he was really, really good. No, I'm saying in 23, he was really unlucky. That stinks when I needed yes. him. When I needed him, Arm. 
when you when you needed unlucky. him when you needed him we got to remember him, when unlucky. you needed him and he what? fell shy of expectations and that's why he sucks now according to peter that sucks he's 69 he's <laughs> he's on my list go like for example um he and sucked also, for I, I, he's at a 137 WRC plus, and he sucks, according I, to Peter. I Rapp. think you would find that funny. You know, Jack, how you said I stuck to my guns in terms of the first base rankings. Actually, I had Christian Walker above Vladimir Grove Jr. on my top 10 first baseman, but that would make Vladdy 70 and Christian Walker 69, and I need Vladdy to be 69. It's a tip Got of the cap. Got you. All it's right. Tip of the cap. Just, I'm letting you know where you are right now, Vladdy. You're in the sexual position. You're in the You're in the funny number. All right, let's see what you do. I would love if he just went bonkers, and he totally can, totally can. So, what but about if he keeps grounding out again? I'm gonna punch a hole through my television. So, what about the X stats was less applicable for Vladdy than maybe some other guys? Annoyance. Okay. <laughs> That's all I needed. <laughs> Next, let's Far see what away. he does. Let's see what he does. Right, I mean, it's 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 written in stone <laughs> that this guy is supposed to hit fifty jacks and at three eighty. I want to see it. I haven't seen it in two years. Right, let's see you do it. But in the last two years, he has been an above average hitting first baseman who's a literal hole defensively at first base. He sucks over there. Do you know what the WAR he put up last year? Arm one point zero. He had one more WAR than you and I did. That's unbelievably bad for a guy of his caliber. And it's not like I left him out of the top 100 and I got really mad at him. I put him 69th. There are 68 really good baseball players who have been way better than him last year. That's where I'm at on Vladdy. He cost like, me like a Edwin lot of money. Diaz. And he Edwin got Diaz really unlucky. better than him last year, wasn't he? Yeah, well, Edwin Diaz, people forget, <laughs> dude. People fucking forget about Edwin Diaz. That's why I, w I wanted to be aggressive with Edwin Diaz. I think no, I'm, none... I'm here for the Diaz rank. Yeah. I'm here for Diaz too. I just nice. I needed to I no, needed to do it. That's you fair. hooped it up, and I just you I know what it. Edwin Diaz was better than Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was last year. That's no, what he, he was. wasn't. He was, by by not he playing, wasn't. by not pissing me off, he was a better fucking player than Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Yes, he was. Do you know what the Mets did? When he went down, when he tore his ACL in that World Baseball Classic, the entire season crumbled. He is what lights up City Field. The trumpets out of the end of the game. He is truly the one reliever, I think, in Major League Baseball that when it's the ninth and you're losing, the game is it's over. over. Yeah, Besides Yohan Duran, you could probably put Duran in that same scenario, but... We think forget when we're watching. I agree with you. We forget when we're watching Edwin Diaz. And I'm not saying we. I'm saying the greater baseball community. This guy is as box office and as good of a reliever as we have had in Major League Baseball since Mariano Rivera retired. I think he is that elite. So I, I, the I'm only like other guy I think game is over is Felix Bautista when he's healthy and you got Omar whistling in the wire and, and he's coming out of Camden Yards. Like that is game over too. And I've got no qualms with Edwin Diaz. I just needed to say it. That's fair. That's a good segue into like, there's no Shane McClanahan on this list. There's no Sandy Alcantara on this list. There's no Felix Bautista. If I know you're not going to play a single game in major league baseball next year, you didn't make the list. Guys like Kyle Bradish made it guys like Garrett Cole made it guys who will have arm injuries right now, but I think that they're going to make it out and throw this year. So I could have dropped them based on that, but I was like, if it's just based on time, because it's not exactly like I think these guys are going to be the top 100 players in war at the end of the year. These are my top 100 players as we're sitting here recording on Tuesday, March 26th. Yeah. These are the top 100 baseball players. And that's what that's what I think. And it's so correct. You, you've got Bradish in. Um Explain to me the omittance of DeGrom then. You think he's going to miss too much time? I just, it's been years. I yeah, wanted to put him in too, and I, like, but I respect in my starting pitcher rankings. I'm like, what are we going to get 50 innings from him this year? And it's yeah. like, well, he's supposed to come back this year. Like we think, but with the other guys, I have a, I have a better feeling that they actually do return. And even if DeGrom returns, does he make it through the end of the season at this point? Like, and I said, remember, I think we ranked the starting pitchers last year, and we I think all of us ranked him high. Or maybe it was a year, and I was like, this is the year. If he can turn back the clock a little bit and give us 100 innings, I'll yeah. fucking put him one. It, it's not coming. 
I hope it does, and I would right. love to be wrong. So because if I'm wrong on Degrom, that means he's back, mm-hmm. and if he's back, baseball is so much better. So same deal with Kershaw, I assume too, because Kershaw is a, a toss up. Like you just don't know. I mean, Degrom are in the knows. same category. It's like fuck, dude. Like, I mean, I hope they're back. I hope they're 100 percent healthy. Yeah. Um. Real quick. I know how much you love Tarek Skubal. Mm. For me, and I might be altered by the hamstring thing for Sonny Gray, but you have Sonny Gray ahead of Skubal, and I found that surprising from you who is so high on Skubal. 100%. I just think we have to give more credit to Sonny Gray for a second. I, I Yeah, Finished I hear you. Second in American League Cy Young, and yes, he has a hamstring mm-hmm. thing, but I didn't want to drop him because of the hamstring thing. I think Sonny Gray is a good long shot to win the Cy Young. The only reason I didn't bet it is because of the hamstring thing, and I just don't know how long he's going to be out. I was going to bet it because him with that defense, as long as he's healthy, I think he could pitch to an ERA below three. Now, it's not going to be in a ton of innings, and there's not going to be a ton of strikeouts, but in terms of run prevention, in terms of not letting guys on base, in terms of walks, he's as good as anybody we have in baseball. Like, I love Scooble, but at the end of the day, he's never thrown over 150 innings. From a talent perspective, Scooble is more talented than Sonny Gray. I, I, I think he is. But... Sonny Gray has been doing it and doing it and doing it. And he's just so damn lethal. Like even in the playoffs too, this is the guy you want on the mound with the game on the line. I think Sonny Gray, I think Sonny Gray is wildly underrated. I almost wanted to put him higher. I, I think he could, he could easily be put higher with what he did last year. Um, I'm, I'm going to go up to the short, the shortstop stacking. That's interesting to me. Mm. Uh, Correa Gunner. Oh, we're passing. I think Correa is going to come back. Oh, wow. No, I've we're got passing, yeah. I've got a clump. Yeah, we're going too far now. I've got oh, a clump <laughs> real quick before the short stops. Okay. Um, And and this is actually going to make me like stand up. Okay. Hands on knees. Peter. Yes. 52 and 53. 52. Are you on drugs? JT You've Real got Muto. JT yeah. Real Muto, 52, and William Contreras, 53. What did you take before concocting this list? I'd love to know. Frack is what I took. Yeah. No, um, I stuck by my catcher rankings, right? If you go look back, that's where I put them. Um, William Contreras is a stud. Can you sit down? I don't want to look at your torso while I'm giving you the pitch. William Contreras is a stud. And there is definitely a 50-50 shot that he outperforms JT Real Muto if JT doesn't bounce back defensively. You're calling because, 50-50. Yes, because what killed JT last season was his defense. He did not grade out well. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt here because he's not some 34-year-old catcher. He, he is. He's 33. Check that age. Yeah, he's 33. 33. You're I'm right. He's not him... some 34 year old catcher. <laughs> I was go. correct. I did not say anything incorrect. <laughs> I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he bounces back. If you go up even farther, we're going to talk about Correa later. I kind of had the same feeling. Now, Correa is younger, right? But JT throughout the years has been doing it year in and year out. I still think he's a great bat. But we also know with JT, it's kind of been a year in and year out thing, right? The even and the odd year. I didn't want to miss out on JT. I didn't want to recognize him for the work that he's already done and put a guy who has played one year, even though that one year was so, so good. And that's why I ranked William Contreras really high, right? Like William Contreras is only almost a top 50 player. But last year, I think on our catcher rankings, we had JT above Adley. And now like we're kind of giving up after one year. And I know you guys are going to say, well, I think that the defense is a problem. And I think that he's aging and I don't think it's going to be there anymore. That's fair. I think that's a fine argument, and you could definitely say that. I'm of the belief that I think he has one more great year defensively, and then I think when the bat is above average, I still think there's a higher likelihood that he could have a higher F war than William Contreras because with William Contreras, right, he came up with the Braves and hit for a lot of juice, but it was more of a smaller sample, and he's playing some DH and outfield. Then he went over to Milwaukee, really small ballpark, and got the most out of his bat. There are some quality of contact concerns with William Contreras as well. It Does he enter a little bit of a sophomore slump? 
I think it's possible, but I decided to stick with the true and tried version of, of JT Realmuto. But I could understand if you disagree with that, but I just thought he was slightly safer, and I that's what I put on my top 10 catcher's rankings, and I'm sticking to it. What are what are the quality of contact concerns with William Contreras? Let me pull it up a little bit. I yeah, mean, I right now I've got cat, William Contreras. Yeah, this cat had go. a 90th percentile exit velocity of 109 miles an hour last year. I understand he puts it on the ground a lot, but like there's a lot of guys that if you hit the ball that hard and put it on the ground a lot, you can still be extremely successful. Uh, I don't know if there's quality of contact concerns with with William Contreras. He also made a huge leap defensively last year. So 100%. you're talking about a guy that's trending this way defensively versus a guy that's trending this way defensively and offensively. I do hear the the benefit of the doubt thing with JT, a guy who's done it, and I think it's valid. I think a lot of people listening to the show would still take JT. But the one thing I wanted to push back on was the quality of contact for William Contreras. He hits the living piss out of the ball. Average exit velocity was among some of the best in the, in the bigs as well. Yeah, 335x Woba to a 357 Woba, right? I'm not saying, like, I'm just I'm just listing out all the things. I agree with you, Arm. I think he's a good player. I think he's a great player. Ranked 53, and JT's 52. He's um, top 55. Yeah, he's top 55. Actually, he's top 53 if you think about it. Hell yeah, he is. Um, I think William Contreras is one of the best catchers in Major League Baseball, and I think JT's the same. Um, With William Contreras, I was a little bit surprised, right? He hit 20 home runs in 97 games for the Braves and then hit 17 in 2023 with a 20-point higher Woba. Um, I mean, I still think he's going to be great. But I just think JT is a little bit safer. Um, and I would also, I wonder if we pulled um, major league pitchers and said, who would you rather throw to, JT Romuto or William Contreras? That'd be a clean <laughs> sweep, right? Baseball is an old right? guard problem. Yeah, I'm it's a saying, total old guard I'm thing. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you pulled them, I wonder what they'd say. And by wondering, I mean, I know what they're going to say. They're going to be like, we'd rather throw they, to they, JT. They'd answer Yachty, there. too. Mm-hmm. They would. And Yachty is a top 10 catcher ever. <laughs> I'm on the Yachty train. It was so funny. Arb, remember when we were looking up lowest WRC plus years, the highest F? Oh my god! And Yachty was god putting up like years. six win seasons while putting up an 84 WRC plus. Like, there's an element to the experienced catcher always being behind home plate, has seen every hitter come in every single spot. And I just, when I was ranking them, I was like, Game Seven, who do I want to catch my pitcher? Who do I want to be in the lineup? Give me JT Realmuto. And but I, William Contreras could have a crazy year. So could JT. It's still JT Romuto. We'll see. Arm your short stops. Now I can go to short stops. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think Correa is going to have a nice year. I think he's going to bounce back and he's going to be healthier. I think he's getting his body right. But Gunnar Henderson is on the cusp. But I think of of being an MVP candidate. But I think also we're talking about guys again trending kind of in different directions. Correa could get gain back a lot of what he lost last year and still not even be quite where Gunnar Henderson is at. And I think Gunnar's only going to get better and better. I know that you're sticking to the shortstop rankings, but that we could just even tether that back to the shortstop rankings. Like what puts Correa ahead of Gunnar at this point? I'm going to bring us back to last year. Last year, I, I made the claim that I think Corey Seager is the best shortstop in baseball. And you guys disagreed because you thought it was Carlos Correa. Now, one year later, after Correa was injured, we're curious if a guy like Gunnar Henderson, who has one year under his belt, winning the Rookie of the Year, great fucking year. He's 42 on this list. He's so awesome. Is now better than Carlos Correa. I couldn't do it. Kind of similar to the JT and William Contreras thing. It's that same thing. Correa, year in, year out. And then the one cherry on top of the Sunday with Correa. Right? He had that down year. Then when we got into playoff time, Carlos Cray hit 408. Carlos Cray was that dude. Carlos Cray is still one of the best defenders at the position, a better defender than Gunnar Henderson. Now you can look at the you can look at the defensive stats last year and say Gunnar graded higher. Close your eyes for a second and tell me who's a better defender. Close your eyes. Close your eyes for a second. I mean, I think it's Cray. Now you could disagree with that, and that's fine. And you could go by the numbers. And the numbers will agree with you. I think Cray is a better defender. Real quick, is that how we do Peter Vision by closing your eyes? 
you know, you can pick apart some of my words, but what is your answer? Do you think Gunnar Henderson or Carlos Correa is a better I love why I love watching Correa play defense. I'm with you. I just want to understand Peter Vision because if I can somehow figure out a way to to capture the power of Peter Vision, I do feel like I can become the final boss of baseball. So here's what I'm realizing. Peter Vision is taught, not learned. Or excuse me, Peter Vision, you're born with. <laughs> you can't learn it. Um <laughs> and, you know, you can tell you can tell with some of the people in my comment sections who believes in Peter Vision, um, all smart people, surprising and super handsome. And if they're a woman, they're very beautiful. Nice. And then the people who don't really believe in Peter Vision, like, you know, they're probably dumber, right? They're the, the yeah. circuits in their brain probably don't connect as well. They're probably um, the people that don't really understand the lowercase X thing too. have no idea about it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, you choose what side you want to be on. Kind of like what Metro said. We don't we don't trust you. What side are you gonna take? I'm taking Peter Vision. Uh real quick, you said he hit four oh eight in the postseason. It was across yeah. six games. Yeah. What has he done in the postseason in his career, Jack? Uh he's, he's a two eighty two hitter with an eight sixty OPS. He is one of the greatest postseason hitters of all time. Okay. Yeah, but I can there's I can, a big I'll, difference I'll between two eighty two and four oh eight. What did Gutter do with the postseason, by the way? When the lights were bright, uh, I'm not when sure. Were, but when the lights I'm were with bright, you, like, what did he do? I'm Don't not. I'm not doubting the postseason. I just want you to pull it up. All I Let's want to see. do is for you to pull it up. I'll look. I'll look right now. Just look. Make sure you you also cite the X stats in the postseason, though. Uh, I'm I'm not on Savant. I'm on Baseball Reference, which stinks. <laughs> Gunner, Gunner hit 500 with a 1300 OPS in the postseason. <laughs> How many games? Three. Not a big enough sample, unfortunately. <laughs> six. <laughs> six is huge. You're right. My bad. Mm. Double the no. amount of plate appearances, right? We're talking about Royce Lewis versus Evan Carter. That was more than double. Yeah. And of larger numbers. It was quadruple. It was, mm. yeah. And larger Double, numbers. Say. Depends on what numbers you're looking at. Okay. So, no, I'll, I'll hear that one. I think that was a good argument. You know, at the end of the day, Correa, he deserves a mulligan. Um, his plantar fascia ripped off in half or whatever. So yeah. like, maybe that'll help now when, when something tears in half and they say, that's a good thing kind of tells you where his body was at. So, yeah. you know, hopefully he's just better this year health wise. Um, next one though, is kind of a similar conversation and two very opposite types of players. Arenado Devers stack was interesting to me. Mm. Arenado down year, but the year before was, you know, an MVP candidate. Devers, and, and I'm not challenging this. I just kind of want you to just elaborate. Yeah. Uh, Devers, rough defensively. Like he, he seemed like he was taking a step forward, then takes another half step back. Uh, but you talk about expected offensive stats. I mean, all indications point towards Devers having a monster offensive season. How difficult was it for you, or did you just think Arenado was, was pretty easily uh, above Devers? 100% difficult. That's why I put them right next to each other. All the ones of same position guys that you see right next to each other, I stayed up a long time trying to figure that out. Devers has a, and I label these guys, a special bat. Devers has the ability to hit 300 with 35 jacks and drive in 110 and put up a 145 WRC plus and be one of the best hitters in Major League Baseball. Nolan Arenado doesn't have that upside anymore, but would we be surprised to see 30 home runs with a 135 WRC plus from Arenado next year? Just keeps doing it year in and year out. And then the defense. Now, you can point to some numbers. You can say, well, Arenado had a down year defensively. He's aging. Spare me. Spare me with guys like Nolan Arenado. I still think he is the class, right? I'd ask you to pull Major League Baseball players. Who do you want to play at third? Probably going to say Arenado. Um... It was so damn close. I do think that Devers is going to have the better offensive season this year than Arenado. Yeah. But it's Nolan Arenado. I mean, it's he still was an MVP candidate in 2022. He's one year removed from that. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. It, it just, if I thought it was razor thin, I gave the tip of the cap to Arenado. I can really appreciate that. I can. I can. I can get behind that. You're uh, a commendable man, Peter. I wouldn't get anything the, else. That, that said, because they are so close, I would not be surprised to see Devers, you know, just go ballistic offensively and just overrun Arenado 
even if Arenado bounces fully back defensively. Because there are problems with Arenado that I fully recognize from a quality of contact lens. He's not hitting the ball as hard as he used to. But at the end of the day, like, Arenado's not this grisly old man. He's 32. <laughs> like, I think he could bounce back at 32 and be awesome. And I also think that last year with the Cardinals was a horrific season where everybody played under their, you know, expected whatever. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that that's going to happen again, especially offensively. And Arenado is just too proven, too good for me to not give him a little bit of mulligan. And he wasn't even that bad last year. I got a good one. And then this might be one of my last, because honestly, I don't have too much of an issue with the, the as we get closer to the top. Bo Bichette over mm -hmm. Marcus Semien. And mm. how about who's between the two? And Manny Machado in between. We can get to mm. that in a second. But Bo Bichette, I, I just, I, I don't know. I struggle to understand what, what Bo Bichette, you know, does that's at the end of the day better when you look at the, the, the cumulative aspect of the last three years from Marcus Semien. You have a year where he hits 45 bombs and gives you six wins. You have a year where he isn't as good, 26 bombs, and still gives you a four win season, but then bounces right back and gives you a 6.3 F4 after a really slow start to the year. And again, 29 bombs, 124 WRC plus. We're talking about nearly 20 war over the last three seasons, uh, you know, or at least 16 and change. Why Bichette over a guy that not only is giving you war, has played 161 or more games or actually 159 or more games if you exclude 2020 in every single season dating back to 2018 and pretty much has played the majority of the games in almost every single year. So available and productive. Real quick before you answer that, Peter, can I show you guys what I had on my iPad before you brought that up, Aram? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Show us your I had the iPad. stat. I had the stat head. Uh, I was head literally like, I wish I could put that together. And yeah, then I, just I had the stat head, head to head, Marcus Semyon and Boba Shett. So I was going to go the same exact place. Can you go through it real quick? Uh, yeah. So in terms of war, since the start of 2021, Marcus Semyon is at 20 flats. Uh, Boba Shett at 14.3. Semyon has played 30 more games, has 300 more plate appearances. Bichette's got 30 more hits. Semyon's got 25 more homers, 20 more runs driven in, 11 more bags. Bichette's hitting at a higher clip, but slug is advantage Semyon. What about OBP? OPS, OBP, um, 10 point advantage Bichette. Why'd you OPS, skip that one? Because uh, oh, oh, yeah, you're just going through it. Yeah, I was going to get to OPS. Yeah, you're just getting so, OPS. All right, OBP, 339 compared to 329. OPS, Bichette, 815, Semyon, 811. OPS plus 124, 120 advantage Bichette. Uh, two all-star games. Semyon's got a gold glove and two silver sluggers. Bichette's been to two all-star games. Here's my take. I make statements on my top 100. The statement is that Bo Bichette is special. You said it. I the statement every year. And was he not great last year? He was fine. He was pretty good. He was damn good. 3-8 F4. 20 homers. Doesn't walk. What was the batting average? He hit 306 with a 339 OBP. He's a special bat. I th And I think there's more power in there. And I think every year I've seen him improve on defense. So real quick, we're calling an 814 OPS a special bat? I think he will be a special. Like, I think he is. He has a special bat. And it's only going to get better and better and better. And it has gotten when? better and better and better, as has the no. defense. And I think this year, last year was worse than the year before. I think he becomes arguably, I mean, what do I have him on the shortstop list? I have him right behind Trey Turner, which would make him, I think, fourth, fifth. Well, now with Mookie, it's a little bit different. But the reason why, and, you know, as you can see, Machado at third base, Semyon at second base right there, too. I did give a little bit of a bump to the shortstop, which is a slightly more premium position than second base. Maybe not slightly, definitely a more premium position in the second base. And I asked myself, who would I rather have in 2024? I said Bichette. And I think while he hasn't fully shown that he's a better bat than Marcus Semien, even though the OPS is higher, the batting average is higher, he's got more hits, all that kind of stuff, even though Semien has played more games, Bichette has also been pretty much healthy as well. And I'm just thinking to myself as a Yankee fan, right, when we're looking at American League 
East hitters. I think I'm most scared of Bo Bichette out of everybody. What? Um, you, you know, you have Adley in there. You have Devers in there. You have Vladdy in there. Um, Wait, you, you're no, scared as, of a as guy a, with as a smoke. Yankee fan, as a yeah. Yankee fan. Why? You're scared of yeah. You're scared of a guy that is slug finisher. I think, arm. I think it's the hardest. I think it's I think it's the hardest to. I think he's the batter that's the hardest to get out in the division. I I don't know about that because he swings at everything. Who would you say is a harder at AB? I think in in the whole division. Yeah, in the whole division, and you say he swings at everything except he has a nineteen percent K rate. Yeah, but he's a four percent walk rate. So yeah, yeah, he's a free he swinger and makes a ton of contact, and it's normally yeah, for base hits. That's why he's hitting three hundred six. It's also why he's getting on base at a three thirty nine clip. So like, it's it, not it, bad. Day, it's acting like three thirty nine is bad. I mean, it's pretty good. It's fine. Yeah, I, it's pretty good. Three forty OBP. So you fear Bo Bichette more than you fear Yandy Diaz offensively? Yeah, I think I do. Yandy by by a good margin. I mean. What does Bo Bichette do better offensively than than Yandy Diaz? Last year, you can say that. What do you What do you mean? Like, what what is what does he do better? I think he's a better hitter. How? I think he <laughs> has. I think he has better bat to ball than he does. He does. Um, Yandy Diaz hit three thirty and has better zone contact, overall contact, and and so no, that's not true. and a K rate. Bichette's punched and a lower out with nineteen percent clip. Rate. Yeah, Yandy's at fifteen point seven. That's fine, right? If Yandy Diaz is a better hitter, you can you can think that. I think Bo Bichette is going to be a better hitter in twenty twenty four than Yandy Diaz is, and Yandy Bo, Diaz is also why? a first baseman. We we said bat here. We're talking about the bat. What, but you what are is... also you're not you are also saying that because Yandy Diaz had a better batting average last year, and he had a higher WRC plus, that he is just better. I think right things change. I think that Bo Bichette is a more talented hitter. Than Yandy Diaz is. I think Yandy Diaz had a better based year last year. I. What do you mean based on what? What What is the criteria that makes him a better hitter? Because I can go underlying stats, I can go contact rates, I could go EVs, I could go production, I could go walk rate, I could go swing decisions, I could go WRC plus. Like you could go home runs. Like what? Wh- what is he better at, hitting wise than Bo? Or, the, or what is Bo Bichette better at hitting wise than Yandy Diaz? I mean, it's hard to it's hard to give you an argument. What after the season he put up <laughs> last year? I'm not going to lie to you. Um, what about the year before that too? 400 on base percentage. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. He, the The year in 2022, <laughs> three seven WAR to Bichette's three point eight. Um, I also dinged uh, Yanni Diaz as a player because he's terrible at first base defense. Well, we're talking about the hitters. You said most feared it. hitter in the American he's League. Hitter, yeah. I think that's fine. You could put you could put Yanni Diaz above Bo Bichette in the most feared hitter in the division. How about how about Adley? I would put Adley, Adley, is, Adley is ranked above Bouchette on this list. So no, I know, but like in terms of fear, yeah, that's I would, fine. I would also, you, could, you could put you could put Yandy. That's I fine. think I would fear Gunner over Bouchette too. Also, also one other issue was <clears throat> you gave Bo Bouchette credit for being a mediocre shortstop when Marcus Semien is just playing second in deference to to Carlos or excuse me to Corey Seager. Whereas if you put Marcus Semien at shortstop right now, he's a better defender than. Bo Bichette. So does that really make Bo Bichette a better player? Uh, I don't know if you that? can just say that. I don't know if you, you can. can you that. absolutely can say that. It's it's it's. We've seen him play shortstop at a higher level, and he's the best, arguably one of the but best. But not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, he, and he's elite defensive second baseman. Uh, he's he's been a, at the top of DRS like every single year, right among the top of the leaderboards. So uh, you know, I, I think it's. I don't know if it's if if, if you can give Bichette credit for that when he's just playing. Of uh, the position, not even playing it well. Eh, I mean, I think he's the reason I ranked him higher on this list is right. I have my beliefs. I think he is going to be a better defender this year. And based because, on what? Because he keeps <laughs> improving every year. And I'm watching him. I think he's going to be a better defender this year. I think he's he's had a lot of errors that are overthrows from Vladdy. Like he's just airmailing it or he's bouncing it to Vladdy and Vladdy's not picking it up. I think those are easily changeable, right? When you talk about your prospects, when you're talking about a guy who had 14 pass balls, you're like, he's too athletic for that to happen to him. And Harry Ford, I think the same thing That's with Bo Bichette, that he That's is too teenager. athletic and he is too sound 
of a baseball player to continue to make six stupid years. mistakes. It's not a range thing. It's not a hands thing. It's not an arm strength thing. I think it's a lapse in judgment up here. And I think the more times that he gets reps and the more he matures as a baseball player, he will improve defensively. He got 4,300 innings at shortstop under his belt. I know, yeah, but he's he, still young. Like it, this is a guy who came up really young and is still progressing. Guys don't guys don't have like the it's very rare to have a defensive epiphany with more than 4000 innings at, at shortstop at the big league level. I'm not saying more epiphany. I'm not off of shortstop. I'm not saying he goes from average to below average to the best defender at the position. I think he goes from slightly below average to above average, and I think the bat just continues to improve. I think there's more power to unlock there. When we're looking at X-Wolby, he's one of the highest in baseball, consistent quality of contact from Bo Bichette, and when then when I watch him hit, he hits everything, right? It's so hard to get him out, whether it's breaking balls down low, and he he it, while he doesn't walk that much, I still think that he has a good eye at the plate. I think this is a special hitter. a good eye if he Chases thirty seven percent of the time. <laughs> also, I mean, but but he he doesn't strike out though. So when he's chasing, that's bat to ball contact on it. Exactly, I think is. But I but still you think can have he a has bad a good eye. eye and great bat to ball. A swing decision models grade him out as a well below average swing decision guy. But also beyond that, I feel like we're selectively applying the x the x stats now. Like I've brought up times where the expected stats are because really this high isn't we, this isn't ranked on an x woba scale. But you're bringing it up. And, and I, I can't bring you, it up for specific guys when I believe in the stat as well. Like some guys have a higher one and I disagree. I don't think that it, there's I as just, much. This is an opinion as well. But I'm just struggling to understand the I think he's going to do this, but then it's just conjecture. There's uh, And then maybe just ex woba. Like defensively, there's there's nothing that says, oh, he's going to just magically have this, this epiphany defensively. Half of his errors were throwing errors. That's about the standard for the split of, of errors for a lot of guys defensively. His range isn't good. He That's actually a big part of the problem. He's a 963 career fielding percentage, and that's the most surface level stat. It just shows you how much he boots it. He doesn't really have very good hands, to be honest. That's gone back since he was a prospect. There's no way that he's just going to have this def defensive epiphany 4,400 innings. But you keep calling it an career. epiphany. What does that mean? I'm saying that I think it, it, he's going, going from to be above bad average good. defender. I don't think it, he's bad. He like, I think that's like, he's never been above yeah, average. He's never been average. Un so I think that's unfair. Bad. I think that's unfair to say that he's going from bad to good. What does bad mean? I think he was slightly below average last year. He was so, definitely below average the year before, and he was terrible the year before that. He has been improving every single year, and I no. think a lot of the mistakes... Hey, well, you, Let you, me attach the numbers up. real quick. Let me attach it was the terrible numbers. Terrible the year before last. It was yeah. better last year, and then it was okay the year before that. So it's not this progressive improvement. It is like kind of just inconsistent, but at least the one thing that's been consistent is a lot of errors in fringy range. <laughs> so let me attach the numbers here. Uh D do you want DRS and outs above average? Or just cool. DRS? Yeah, you can read the numbers. DRS and OAA. Um, 2021, two defensive runs saved, negative five outs above average. 2022, negative 16 defensive runs saved, negative seven outs above average. 2023, five defensive runs saved, so he's in the positive, negative two outs above average. So it, it's like, it's almost like a pendulum swinging right now. Which yeah, is I think he, like had, he had a weird. really bad defensive year um, in 22. Yeah. Um, And when I was watching him in 22, now I didn't watch every game. It was, again, my opinion. A lot of those mistakes, it seemed like they were throwing errors, whether it was sailing the ball over Vladdy's head or throwing the ball into the dirt. When I watched him play shortstop, I didn't think that this is a guy with bad range. I think he has good range. I think he's quick on his feet. And I think he's going to make more plays and not be such a dunce like he can be sometimes. And after last season was an improvement over 22, albeit a terrible 2022, but at least a fine defender, fine, right? Five DRS, negative two outs above average, it's fine. And then I think he is going to build on that and be a better defender, which will help the war. And then I think he's also going to improve at the plate because I think there's still more juice in there. I think this could be a guy who hits 25 home runs, hits 310, leads the league in hits while playing a slightly above average defensive shortstop, which makes him a five-win player. And I think Simeon can easily get there as well, but maybe it's just more of a belief in Bo Bichette. Well, that's that's where Semien, I rank. Semien is actually Semyon's been there. He's had three six war seasons in the last four or five years, and and Bo Bichette's best season was a five one season, 
three years ago. Also, where is more power coming from at 26 years old over 2,000 plate appearances into his career? Where what do you mean where does more power come from at 26 years old? He can easily well, he, 29 home runs, 24 home runs, 20 home runs the last three years. Why is it just, oh, he's going to now hit more home runs based on what? I'm not saying more home runs. I said I think he can hit 25 home runs this year. He had two seasons. You said more power. Four. Yeah, I think more power than last year. That you said, like, he's going to hit for more power than he has before. It it has steadily kind of declined more. He's been more of a line drive guy and just putting ball on the ground more. And like, why, why is he gaining power? Is there a tangible reason why? I think, I think he had the lowest launch angle of his career last year. Exactly. That's a bad trend. I know that's not a good trend. But the thing is, if you're talking about the defense as well, it wasn't exactly a downward trend 7.3, then 8.5, then back down to 6.2. I think he just lowers it a little bit. He hits the ball extremely hard, right? Put up a 363 X Woba. That's one of the highest in Major League Baseball. It actually puts him in the 86th percentile of the game. I think if he just lifts the ball a little bit more and even gets back to just his last two prior years there, I think he's a 25 home run guy. Okay, well, his average exit velocity dropped by nearly two miles per hour and his launch angle dropped. So I, again, I, I do think that you can make some tweaks and get there. I just... You're just banking on like I think this is going to happen because I want it to happen. Like what? what no, is the I reason just told why? you why I think it's going to happen, and you just discounted it. I think no, I, I, if he improves but, the launch angle with how hard he hits the ball, we're going to get back to 25 home runs. So yeah, but here's maybe the thing. even more. He, his exit velocities dropped and the launch angle dropped. So I'm just trying to understand why he's going. And, and even if he's back to 25 home runs, I'm not buying. I'm not buying a guy who had a, uh, an exit velo drop and had a launch angle drop when he's 25 years old now going into 26 i don't buy that i think it's but, going but to be better this vladdy. year but you buy no, it i don't vladdy. buy it with vladdy <laughs> that's not what does that even mean i buy it with vladdy because you're vladdy you, you, you know where vladdy comes from vladdy is the 69th ranked player vladdy like, comes from the parlay yeah. baby <laughs> yeah there's there's an ode to vladdy that's fine but it's not that i'm not buying it with vladdy because vladdy also plays sh- first base and he was terrible at it and over the last two seasons Bichette's been the better hitter so there you go and Bichette's I'm better just at saying shortstop though, than but, Vladdy is at first base Vladdy's one of the worst defensive for he put up a 1.0 effort that's fine I'm talking about the hitting right now though because we're talking about trends and now we're expecting him to just buck this trend because not buck what's the trend what's the, the trend, trend? is From launch angle down year? velo's down a little bit I don't think Again, I'm not buying I'm not great. I'm not buying it as a trend if it's one year I'm not it's buying two. that it's consecutive what, what, years of the launch angle going down, where it's he, the power numbers going he put slowly up, down. He put up the highest hard hit rate of his career in 2022 at 50.3%. And then this past year? It dropped to 44.9%. I'm saying I'm not buying a one-year trend. I, I just It I, went up thing, after, year, after year one. From 2021, he gained 3%. I'm not buying the downward trend. I'm, I'm not. That's I'm just, why I ranked him high. I'm trying to find the reason as to why he's going to hit for more. You keep power asking for the more reason. I think he's going to get back to that 50% hard hit rate. I think if the launch angle gets up back to 2022 rates, I think he can hit 25 home runs, which he hit 24 in 22. So, so the circles back to is that better than Marcus Semyon if he's back to 2022 uh, Bo Bichette? Because from pretty much almost every offense or just every statistic, that wouldn't be better than Marcus Semyon. That's a four and a half win player that, you know, is not really keeping up with him in a lot of the important categories. Yeah. I mean, Marcus Semyon is a phenomenal player. I'm not going to debate that at all. Um, but again, if we're looking at some ex Woba to Woba stuff, there was some quality of contact concerns with Marcus Semyon as well. Yeah, I mean, stop we, with that. Like, he's had three, six war seasons in the last five years. Why are we talking about no, we, quality? Wait. He had 45 in, bombs in 2021. He had 26 the year after that and 29 the year after that. That's all more than Bo Bichette's ever hit. Like, I, I don't understand how we could cite quality of contact when the guy's been doing it for years and years and years. And then like, I feel like we're moving the goalpost on the quality of contact. In 2022, too. in 2022, he slashed 248, 304, 429 for a 104 WRC plus. And yes, the home runs were there and he put up a 4.0 F4. And you could say, well, that was better than what Bichette did last year. And I would agree with you. From 2021 to 2023, Marcus Simeon, by the numbers, has been a better player. Yes. Right? Sometimes in my top 100, I take leaps. And my leap is putting Josh Naylor on there, Bo Bichette being on there, because I think he is going to have the best offensive season of his career, 
which rivals anything Marcus Simeon has ever done. Even though the forty five no, home runs is fucking absurd. That's it, awesome. It but that was it, it, you know a few it, years it really ago doesn't. now. It it really doesn't because we, we have three years of over a six F war where I mean we've barely seen Bichette eclipse five. He's done it once. And and my other thing is how about last year? Twenty nine pumps. He walked at a ten percent clip. Struck out at a fourteen and a half percent clip. One twenty four WRC plus. One of the best defenders in the game at second base. Six point three F four. I, I that's what and, and also steals more bags still. Like, had a I, higher I, I WRC plus. That's fine marginally. What, yeah, what marginally. by one? No, I know by and, one. Exactly. And you have way better defense and a higher war. So I, I guess th- this is this is what I wanted it to kind of get to, which is there's not really a an explanation. Why no, there's not an explanation that you like. There's not an explanation that you like. You're just, you're just saying this is what I think he's going to do based on nothing I, other I than think I think we're at 20 minutes do. of Boba Shet, by the way. <laughs> yeah, going. I mean, we, I, I, th- this is what I think. I'm telling you that I think he is the 50% hard hit rate guy, which is one of the best in baseball. I which think he's still if he ups be worse the than him angle a little bit. Still worse than Semyon last year. Sure. I mean, he didn't lock, unlock as much <laughs> power when he was a 24 year old. I think at 26. After all those innings under his belt, I think everything clicks for him, and I think he has a blowout type season where he's a top twenty-five player in Major League Baseball. I think Bichette is going to have a monster year, and if he doesn't, I'll hang my hat. I'm banking on that. I think that's all I got. I think twenty. Uh, where was where was Bichette? I feel like Bichette's a curse word now. I think twenty-five through four is awesome, Peter. Um, Otani, this is the very last thing. I think that honest to God, that was like 20 minutes on Boba Shed. Um, Otani one, judge two, Acuna three. Mm. Otani's not pitching. So again, yeah. I ask you, what what kind of drug are you using? And can I get some? Well, what are you saying? Otani shouldn't be one. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying, yeah, like a pitching. DH shouldn't be the best player in baseball. Yeah, I it's just like it's Otani. He had to be one. I mean, he just had to be like, I'm not like, I know he's not pitching this year. And yeah, you could say, well, for 2024, he should be seventh or because he's a DH, right? He should be in the same category as Jordan. I think he and and Jordan should be stacked. But I just cannot believe, well, I can believe it because I watched it. He was the best hitter in Major League Baseball last year by WRC plus. Like he was the best. So if if we're all looking at hitters, I know obviously Otani would get docked because he's a DH, but he was the best hitter in baseball. He also looks like the fastest. I will say it. He looks like the fastest player on the field in that Dodgers Padres series. It, his home to first time was just absurd. So if he is not pitching this year and we're going for 30 stolen bases or something like that, like in that interview when they were talking, I think it was uh, Harold Reynolds talking to Freddie and Mookie, Shohei Otani, they were asked who's going to lead this team in stolen bases. And they said Otani and just immediately looked at him. I mean, if he's if he's 50. 35 while hitting three. I mean, he's going to be one of the best players while just being a DH. And then, right, if he throws left-handed, I'm sure he'd be, like, as good as Kyle Freeland, like, probably. Do you think? Uh, two two sentences, Max. Mm. Three sentences, Max. I like the statement you're making with Judge over Acuna. I disagree, but why did you do Judge over Acuna? Last two years, Judge has the highest F4 by a lot. In Acuna's mm-hmm. best season, the MVP, 40-70, 8.3 F4 compared to Judge at 11.6 when he hit 62 home runs. The I defense the is the separator. And personally, on my list, right, Bobby Wood Jr. might be a little bit lower than people might like. You and I think loan past your two sentences. I I just think now I'm I building on too, something else. So, yeah, Stolen terrible, bases, okay. I think, are just a little bit overrated when we're looking at a baseball player. Like people just see a gouty stolen base number. Like mm-hmm. Bobby Wood Jr. stole 49 bases, if I got that correctly, in 64 chances. So he was a 76% hit rate. You want to be 75 for that to be worth it, right? Like he was right there. Acuna was the same thing. It's like if you steal, if you try and steal 90 times and you steal 73 of them, it's worth it for you to steal. But a guy like CJ Abrams, right? 47 and 51 chances. Like, I think that's more valuable. Trey Turner, 30 for 30, which is absurd. He's so good. Um, Like, I think that's more valuable. So, like, putting Acuna up there and be like, well, he's 40, 70. Yeah, well, Judge was like 62, 20 and played way better defense. And then he just ran into Dodger Stadium's wall. When he's still at 39 jacks in like 100 games. 
I would fine. rather have Judge. I just would. But again, like Acuna's three, he's so fucking awesome. I, I think the defense thing's huge because it's not only is he a better defender, he also is playing center field. So like I'm with Peter on that one. I have one last question for Peter and then I'm good. And this is more of a, again, I don't envy him for having to, to rank these guys, but I just want to hear his explanation because it had to be tough. Bryce Harper, Jordan Alvarez. I knew you knew I was going to oh. say Why? How? How'd you do it? Let's hear it. So I had Jordan in the original rough draft hire. Because I think he was a better, I thought like, I really, who would I rather have bottom of the ninth inning game on the line? I, honestly, both. And I said, <laughs> yeah, I literally, I, and I said in my mind, because it's so, I mean, like Bryce Harper a couple of years ago was a 170 WRC plus guy. And now he's moving over to first base. If he, I think he's going to be a good defender over there. I mean, he could win the MVP, but so could Jordan. So I was like, all right, they're both as good as any hitter in the game. They both have the insane fear factor. They both have the aura. I'd rather have Jordan. And then I looked at the postseason stats. Harper has 1,000 OPS in the playoffs. Jordan's at 950. And I was like, fuck, I'll put Harper. And it's just, and then what I was like, all right, I I wasn't really sure. And then I, I kind of talked myself into Harper's going to win a gold glove, isn't he? Like he's yeah, just probably. gonna figure out how to do that at first because he's a he's a different type of ball player. He's like once in a blue moon these guys come along. Like Jordan can't just go over to first and win a gold glove. He just that that isn't in his bag. I don't think. Could prove no. me wrong, right? I don't know. But Harper, he's just a little bit different. He's yeah. a little bit different. And I was shocked because it's like we watch the playoffs. Don't like Bryce Harper obviously has this like insane postseason pedigree, but doesn't it feel like Jordan in the playoffs is like a little bit scarier? Just curious. You yes. Guys. You think he is? And then I was like, well, Bryce Harper's stats are better. And I was like, well, I can't really, can't really, I mean, I can talk about aura, but I, you know, the proof is in the pudding. So I went with Harper, but damn, they're both so good. I think both of them legitimately could win the MVP in both their leagues. Sure. I like it. All right. Final wellness check before you plug the merch. How you doing? I feel good. I so this great. is this is out of love. <laughs> like, How about this? It, How about this? Give me a felt... final. Give me a final review, right? You guys had questions. I didn't really hear any positives, right? Like no, I'm glad no. you guys ranked this guy over this guy, or I'm glad you gave guys love. I was surprised. That's not I ranked the point positive. of the exercise. No, I know, but there, you know, you could sprinkle it in there. I'm a human being. I emotions and feelings. It. I just I, I just told in. you 25 through four were awesome. That's no good. notes. I'll take that. I'll take that. Okay. I am very. Um, I'm very excited about the top ten. I think the top 10 is as good of a top 10, maybe in the history of rankings. Gotcha. I'm like, going so, to go out and say it. I, uh, I, it takes a lot to like, get me going. Um, but there's always the random you got going. Yeah. You got me going. That was fun. Yeah. I was just like, I no, got I think, that out. I think that was, some, I, woo, I no, that was that. good. And I, and I like doing it before the season, right? We, we, we got a kickoff right before the season. The one thing, one thing I will say, I, there are statistical arguments against some of these guys. But I wanted to go out on a limb with the guys that I love, um, and it's I not get, it's hey not man, all backed that, by stats. That's you know? why it's not just baseball's top 100 players. That's why it's mine, it's, right? Yeah. And I Peter Apple, there is Peter Apple's top 100 players. There's something about that bad man in Toronto. I just love. Yeah, I wouldn't Obashek. call him bad yet. We he's can get into it again. <laughs> I think he's. Well, so all right, good. Well, let's go back. So, if if he's bad, what is Mark? No, I'm kidding. We'll, we'll, we'll just, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think he's super talented. I think he's gonna have a good year. Um, but that was fun. That was that was I, great. If you if you told me before that we we're gonna get into 20 minutes of Marcus Semien versus <laughs> Boba Shet, Boba Shet gonna call me condescending. I would <laughs> my ass off. I am condescending when I argue no, no, though. That's that's my tactic. I can't control it, dude. It's just in me. If you get me fired up in an argument, that's how I like. That's how I distract you with the left and hit you with the right. It, it well, it's better than boom. it's better than physically punching. I will say that. So, so never after this, after this, after so we've all we've done all the debates. Did you guys find something in the top one hundred that you really liked? Like, was there one place where you're like, you rank this guy really high? Excuse me, and I love it. Or you rank this guy really low, and I love that. I don't know. So, was there one thing that was like, yes? Well, I'll say one thing to, to Jack's point. When I when we got to Bo Bichette, like that point and onward, like 25 onward, I had nothing that I could bring up from there. That's why yeah. I said this is my last question. Um, because honestly, I think 25 to to one 
you know, of course, anybody can shuffle it how you want, but I there's no I think you did a pretty good job of just stacking it in a very reasonable way. And I think that the like the logic is sound there as you go through. The other one I love is Michael Harris. I'm always going to be pro Michael Harris in the top 40. Talk about a guy who has good you know, quality of contact. Um, and then what's the one other one that I wrote? Hassan Kim at 73. I think mm-hmm. he's going to be a monster this year. I, and and the thing is Crawford's done it and he had a really good year last year too. So I kind of, I just like that stack, but I love that you have Kim over Schwarber because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people just look at the offensive numbers, but Kim is so valuable across the board. Agreed. I really love the stack of Riley 20, Tucker 21, Olsen 22, and Gosman 23. Like, those are four guys that I root really hard for, and I like that they're all clumped together. When I did this top 100, I'm like, holy shit, the Braves are really good. <laughs> like, the Braves I, are really just, good. It was just another reminder. Mm-hmm. Another whole team is top 100 players, and I was just what? like, whoa. The, the almost, only I way... I felt bad because it's like there were so many Braves in here. I'm like, well, if it's really close, I might just drop a Brave down a spot just because there's so many of them. And it's like... But like shit, I mean, I felt bad. Look where I ranked Max Freed. I feel like I severely underrated him. He's like in the fifties. Like Max Freed, when he's on, is it's like one of the best pitchers in the game. And I just, it's just like these guys are so good, especially in the top. Like, I mean, even from like thirty to sixty, they're all really they're good. All so good, I'm, and I'm and so hell, good. dude, from sixty-one to hundred, they're all good except Kyle Schwarber. Yeah, Vladdy's <laughs> not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to just see the comments on this because I don't think you and Jack and Peter, like you, you guys go, you guys will go back and forth a little bit more. I don't think Peter and I really like ever like argue it's good. as much on here. So I, people are going to be like, whoa, that's what that looks like. So I'm excited yeah. to see those guys. I'm, I'm going to stop listening to the show now. <laughs> yes, so I'm disgusted. <laughs> What do you I guys thought think, they were best friends. <laughs> what do you guys think Blue Jays fans are going to think about this one? Because I did oh, they're 20 gonna minutes sure. hyping Bo Bichette, and then I just send Vladdy to the gulag. Oh, like, true. They're, <laughs> they're going to be like, they're going to be like, <laughs> They're just going to be pointing the screen and be like, I, I don't know about that you. Guy, yeah. I, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like the guy that complained to me for having Meyer too low and Teal too high on the top 100 list. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, so do you like the Red Sox or do you hate the Red Sox? I can't yeah. figure you out. Joking. But a great All top right. 100. I agree with everything that I agree with. Um, props to me for agreeing with myself. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed. Make sure to go check out the list on justbaseball.com. And if you have a problem with it, um, there's a garbage can to dispose of probably near your desk. Write down your complaint and put it in there. Um, reach out to me. Yeah, just reach out yeah, to reach Arm. Yeah, reach out you know, to Arm. We'll mobilize. You know, com- we'll- complain behind my back. I was that? So I was the guy that hated Peter last year, <laughs> and now, Arm, you're the guy that hates Peter this year. It was a blast. I was sitting there just like, oh, how is Jack getting riled up right now? Like, who, <laughs> like I'm fine. I don't mind. <laughs> Here I, I am just fucking shaking, sweating. That's <laughs> what I would like. You could do a top 50. A top 100 is fucking tough because like, what, 79 to 81? Like, I mean, what are we talking about here? But with that said, they're all perfect. So make sure to go check yeah. it out on JustBaseball.com. And if you enjoyed this episode on YouTube, hit that big red subscribe button. Opening day is right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. On the next episode, opening day preview. On the Friday episode, opening day recap, and we are off and running. And if you could please leave a five-star review, whether it be on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts, we'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. For Jack, for Aram, I'm Peter. And with that, thank you, everybody.